If you live here in Southern California, this is not going to come as any surprise to you, but we've got a drought going on. In fact, if it wasn't for the water that California gets from other states, this would all be a desert. Because we have no water source of our own. Drought is common here, just as it was in Israel during the time of the prophets. The unpredictable weather and the patterns of the winds were such that droughts of an intense nature could go on for years. We remember the story about Elijah and the prophets of Baal, how God brought this drought upon the land to humble the people. And that it was God's action that ended the drought. In our Old Testament lesson this morning, Jeremiah is speaking about such a drought condition. And he interprets it as a punishment from God on the sins of the people. Yet in the last few verses, Jeremiah makes an appeal to God to assist the people and to save them. From the writings of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 14, beginning at verse 7. Although our iniquities testify against us, act, O Lord, for your name's sake. Our wanderings from you indeed are many, and we have sinned against you. O hope of Israel, its Savior in time of trouble, why should you be like a stranger in the land, like a traveler turning aside for the night? Why should you be like someone confused, like a mighty warrior who cannot give help? Yet you, O Lord, are in the midst of us, and we are called by your name. Do not forsake us. Thus says the Lord concerning his people. Truly they have loved to wander. They have not restrained their feet. Therefore the Lord does not accept them. Now he will remember their iniquity and punish their sins. Have you completely rejected Judah? Does your heart loathe Zion? Why have you struck us down so that there is no healing for us? We look for peace but find no good for a time of healing, but there is terror instead. We acknowledge our wickedness, O Lord, the iniquity of our ancestors, for we have sinned against you. Do not spurn us for your name's sake. Do not dishonor your glorious throne. Remember, and do not break your covenant with us. Can any idols of the nations bring rain? Or can the heavens give showers? Is it not you, O Lord our God? We set our hope on you, for it is you who do all this. This is our first lesson. Psalm 84 is a beautiful expression to God for the dwelling places of the Lord in the temple of Jerusalem. Even the sparrow, the most common and insignificant of birds, finds a home there. And the swallow builds its nest high above the altar, where it is safe from cats and other predators. This psalm expresses deep gratitude for a sense of peace and a providence that we find here in church. Let's read Psalm 84 responsibly. <coughs> How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, indeed it faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars. O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. 
Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they, As they go, go through the valley of Baca, they make a place of springs. The early, early rain, rain also, also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The, the God, God of gods will be seen in Zion. Zion. For the past several weeks, we've been hearing from St. Paul as he writes to his protege, Timothy. Paul is writing to him from prison where he has been placed because he has disrupted the people proclaiming that there is a God other than Caesar. In our lesson for this morning, Paul is describing for us how he made his testimony before the Roman authorities. Now this is a remarkable thing to consider because Paul could have had someone speak on his behalf. As a Roman citizen, that was his right. Instead, he chose to speak for himself. Secondly, when he offers up his defense, rather than trying to get himself out of trouble, he uses it as an opportunity to witness his faith and to tell the Romans about Jesus the one true God. This is from Paul's second letter to Timothy, chapter 4, beginning at verse 6. St. Paul writes, As for me, I am already being poured out as liquid in a cup, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through the message, that, I'm sorry, through the message might be fully proclaimed, and all Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. It's important for us to realize in our gospel lesson for today that Jesus is not commending the second man in our story because he's a tax collector. As a matter of fact, tax collectors were often cheats and people who the Jews despised because the tax collectors were gathering income for the Roman government. But here we've got a story of two men who go to church, one's very proud of himself, and the other quite humble. And it's the humble one who gets Jesus' approval. This is the Gospel according to Luke, <coughs> the 18th chapter, beginning at the ninth verse. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Once upon a time, two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, Oh God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to him, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, 
This man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, and we turn off the recording. We believe in one God, the Father.